testing testing what it is what's up got a crypto video in the cut which i don't think i've ever done one of these i don't know why i just moved the fucking mic back instead of turning the volume down the mic but uh i also don't have my camera my, fuck this shit is way too loud um i don't have my camera on my good camera because i have not gotten my hair cut recently you don't need to see the definition in the corners here i gotta get an edge it pretty soon um crypto right very uh polarizing subject currently you have a lot of uh <laughs> a lot of people who may not see heaven that have invested quite a bit into crypto and uh, are making millions of dollars off of it you have a lot of liberals that also will not see heaven that uh ardently hate crypto uh without putting anything into actually studying it because that's funny. that's what's cool to do nowadays like one way or the other it is cool to hate on shit without looking into it now i'm going to try to talk to both crowds uh completely unbiased and then end this video by i don't know giving a prediction on how this all goes out so the the, the anti-crypto liberal crowd i think that's the one that matters the most for the conversation because i am somebody that is a crypto investor but i have a lot of experience around um I guess as far as America goes, like far left youth, which a far left person in America is like a fucking middle left anywhere else, if not almost center left. But um anyway, so a lot of people that are of the younger crowd that uh are massively influenced by crowd thought, crowd speak, uh, as I think anybody that really identifies by a certain party ideology is like i think no matter what you no matter if you think you are contrite by being liberal or far right whatever um you still abide by a general group think because that's kind of how parties are designed by a group think um so if you do say i'm a communist or i'm liberalist or whatever you are under the guise of group think so the, I guess the what's been trendy as of recently is to go like, is this as if you are? I forget what they call it. As if you're like a, a capitalist, um, you're part of a capitalist society, but you refuse to acknowledge your own contributions to capitalism. Uh, just take that, but apply it to emissions, environmental emissions, to pretend as if you are going to save the environment while actively contributing to the problems of the environment and only sacrificing in the most superficial ways. Um, that's always been fun to me. I, I, I love seeing hypocrisy play out in the, uh, the real world. Um, so there's a lot of people who, you know, I've seen across the internet, seen on uh, YouTube, you know, you know, there's various channels um, as if the internet's and YouTube are like mutually exclusive. Um, <laughs> and some of the key tenets of this this point I see is that one crypto and crypto rigs specifically uh, are massive harms to the uh, to the uh, to the environment and produce emissions. Um, another point I see is. They don't really serve a functional purpose to society. Uh, and the, I guess a sub point of that is that the money gained from them is pretty much non-existent money, not, not real. Um, doesn't have real functional value. Uh, and that kind of like the, the closing point is that people who partake in, I guess, point one and point two are just pieces of shit intrinsically. And, uh, deserve to lose whatever happens to them deserve to lose ownership of the money they put into certain investments and to nfts and to whatever um so i'm just trying to uh, i guess address those points the best that i know how to without looking into articles or whatever um the environmental emissions one the, the the mining rigs yes that's bad uh just straight up that's bad i think mining rigs should uh be reduced um, I would still contend that in like a sense of saying like one person owning one GPU using that for a mining rig or just using that for mining 
you know, like not necessarily Bitcoin, which you would need way more than just one uh, one GPU to get anything of significance from these days. Um, but using that mind, like an altcoin, something like that. Um, that's bad, but my thought process always has been people who pretty much, people on this uh, environmental side of things, uh, which is, I think everybody should be pro. I mean, look at the environment around us. Everybody should be pro trying to conserve what the little we have of the environment. I, I, everybody should be part of that. But people who are like in this extreme spectrum, um, I think that one thing they ignore is that you literally have never gained anything ever from signal, signaling out the individual. When the crowd tears apart the individual, the individual mining rig, the individual GPU, the individual Hummer, uh, decades past, um, gas guzzler, like nothing has been gained from that. The problem is that, and it's funny because it's this crowd that's being taken aback by it through what I would consider propaganda, um, at least slanted perspectives, I would say. Um, the we'll just call them lefties because I mean that's I think the massive constituents here. Um, the lefties have been pretty much indoctrinated, in my opinion, to kind of have this opinion that if you attack the individual, you'll gain something more than attacking the industry, and that's not all of them, that's not all the people who are trying to make a change. Some do have the right state of mind that if we could just keep on putting. Um, some kind of pressure on these industries we could have at least incremental change. Um, those are the smart people. But the problem is that many people aren't willing to put in the work to get that incremental change because A, is incremental, and then B, that's just more work than just going on Twitter and like adding some random guy to NFT and telling him, hey, you're a fucker that's um, consuming more power than a fucking apartment, whatever, whatever their general spiel is. That's a lot easier than going down to your local oil rig and saying, fuck you. And then like, you know, trying to um, do a, um, I forgot the word, a boycott or trying to impede their um, their processes, you know, hacking them and tearing down their um, infrastructure for like, let's say days on end. That's a lot more work, but it's also a lot more tangible. Um, if I was going to say you want to attack crypto rigs, then attack the crypto farms that is this like find a way to do that. I'm not I, I'm not advocating for any of that. You know I don't want to go to prison, but I'm just saying like if you want to have change, that would be something. But just go to some random person with an NFT and then say you're the cause of all this is happening. I, I mean I think that's just bullshit. I mean I think it's always bullshit to take an individual person off of this anything. Like the whole ideology that like you are participating in this problem doesn't ever solve the problem. Because even if you got this one person to change their ways, one person isn't changing the fucking problem of uh, emissions from any walk of life. From fossil fuels, which many people drive fucking fossil fuels cars. Um, you can say it's because of the infrastructure of my fucking city or state. But the problem is you still own a gas guzzling car that you could own something else or not own a car, period. You are participating in the problem. Um, but they own that. They own fucking... Uh, you know, every two year or even some some people every year they'll uh, update their their phone, and I'll tell you right now, a lot of those phones do not get recycled. So you should at least, I would say, petition your uh, phone company of choice and ask them to <laughs> mandate they recycle uh, the phones um, that come back to them, or the third party being a, a Verizon or AT&T main, and, you know, demand it, I guess. Anyway, the point being, demand it gets recycled because um, a lot of phones that don't get recycled. Um, not to mention the waste and the boxes and all that shit that goes, you know, packaging the phone. Um, people own fucking PlayStations, monitors, TVs, multiple TVs and monitors. Uh, they have multiple devices plugged in at any given fucking moment into their house. Um, of choice. I mean, it just goes on and on. They consume fast food. They consume fast fashion. I mean, it just goes on and on. Like, it's just bullshit. Like, it's it's just literally it. Like, there there are a select few people that I am not referring to. People that do do their damnedest to reduce their footprint in all walks of life. Those people I am not speaking to. 
those people are doing the right thing. They can say whatever the fuck they want to say. Who, who without sin, you know, cast first stone, all that stuff. But the people who literally ingest this shit in every other part of their life, who actively support uh, sweatshop companies and all that shit, and then turn around and say, or, or turn around a whole in that attitude and like point to this industry as the one that is fucking up everything for the uh, environment. Just laughable shit. Um, I think it kind of touched on my second point, which I don't even remember what it was, but um, I think, I mean, I do remember me at least mentioning people, uh, you know, ignoring the fact that money is to gain, be gained from this. If you are acknowledging that you actually participate in a, car, um, a capitalist society, and usually if you're aware of that, you're aware of how money tends to stay within certain communities um, in, a, in a cyclical fashion, at least wealth, not money, but wealth tends to t- uh, stay in cyclical uh, families. Um or groups, not necessarily families, um, then you need to be aware that the biggest problem, more than anything right now, is um, kind of the, I don't say caste system, but, you know, just the way that money is tiered. Uh, The 1%, I think, owns, like, more money than, um, I think, the the net's 80%, I want to say. Something to that effect. I forget exactly how the statistic works. But, like, the nets, the, the 10% owns, like, more like the other 90%, something to that effect. Um, I, I would say the only way that you can even affect that, that kind of hierarchy is by decentralizing the wealth. Because if certain individuals, and that, that's what goes into cryptocurrency, is I'm trying not to go on too many tangents and just explain how cryptocurrency works in a, uh, in a fundamental sense. But... If you can decentralize wealth from banks that tend to abide by the same kind of code of, of customers and they give out loans and stuff like that, like they have a general rubric who they want to give this shit out to, um, then you can really do some things. I mean, like if you can just have almost a blind test that says, hey, this person, no matter, you know, as long as they have the money to get this loan, they can get it. Um, that uh, opens up for so many more people. Really, when you see a lot of, again, I just use the word lefties and just just put a name on it. When you see a lot of lefties have problems with stuff like banks and um, and and uh, you know, voting protocols stuff like that. A lot of those qualms are answered by some of the leading crypto projects. Like when you have. You know, governance DAOs, um, those, I think you could have a world where DAOs are used for, um, like, president, presidential elections, or at least local elections. Um, you could even have that where we really serve, if you could have a DAO be a jury for a, uh, a criminal, you know, a criminal, um, Instead of it being of his own peers and it being affected by his community where he's from, like, you know, with OJ, he tries this place instead of this place. He has a different, um, a different base that they kind of draw uh, juries from. I know, like, probably the jury system is drastically different than it was in the 80s. But the point being, where you're at and in the um, kind of the way the judge works kind of dramatically affects who is your own peers. If you could just have a blind DAO and just draws people literally from the internet, um, obviously you want to control the, the pool a little bit, but the point being, like, you can really have a blind uh, response, which I think it would be, I think if you could just have like, 10 random people from America kind of look at this person uh, and then vote that way, it'd be a lot better than having, like, let's say you have a Kyle, Kyle Corver. I don't know. Not Kyle Rittenhouse. Let's just say you have a Kyle, like a white person, traditional white person. Um, and you have him being tried in what you would consider a very white area. Let's just say Wyoming. It's going to be a little bit different. He was tried, let's say, down the street, like fucking um, Compton, Los Angeles, you know, for example. Um, it You really are affected by the area in a lot of these situations. I just think that if you could have a real blind um 
crowd voting, I think that it would be, it would at least the, the response by the larger media would be different because you can't say that, hey, this is a bunch of, you know, this or that if it was literally just randomly generated. And again, you'd have to have control groups here. Like, you got to have protocols to make sure that it's not just, because if it's America, you know, it's like 70% white people, you would more than likely just have like nine, eight white people out of a crowd of 10, a uh, jury of 10. So you'd want to have some kind of limiters, but within reason, of course. Um, I still like to say that, like, a lot of the issues of centralized wealth and centralized loans and centralized voting and all that stuff kind of being allowed to the same high upper class um, areas could be slowly whittled down, I think, by adopting crypto like principles. Not necessarily have to be crypto coins, I guess, um, because a lot of crypto coins even have like good. Uh, well thought out plans long term but I think it's just something to look at I mean it's really my problem with, with this whole argument is that a lot of people that are anti-crypto have qualms with the larger society and economy that are answered by certain crypto projects I think if you would at least look into that and see how to take those principles and apply it to your own economy of choice um you could really have something like you could have a mixed economy that feeds off of decentralized, um, you know, financial sh systems. Um, I, I don't know. It could be a true free market, you know, versus what's uh, kind of abiding now in the uh, American uh, setup. I don't know. Um, I could go on about that, but to the pro crypto crowd, I think that I probably made the case as a pro crypto person. Uh, how you should, I think, bridge the gap. And, you know, I think it's pretty much now, it's like it's almost like the Democrats versus Republicans. I guess it's a, it's a shouting party. Like, it's the, the pro-crypto crowd, I think, for the most part, does not really give a shit about the anti-crypto crowd. That's what I've noticed from using the internet. A lot of the times, the anti-crypto crowd, like, they're attacking topics like NFTs, the uh, environment, blah, blah, blah. They kind of just, you know, post their articles relating to that subject. They give their techniques to keep it moving. They're not really a ravenous crowd like the like the um, anti crypto crowd, which I'm not saying one is better than the other. I'm just saying one is definitely a lot louder than the other, um, at least on the internet. Um, so to that effect, I would just say like try to inform people, you know, as best you can. Like if you're being shitted on, like saying this and that, I would probably say that the anti crypto crowd, because I know a lot of the um, I know examples of a lot of the type of people that compile that crowd. They're not really privy to like, I think listening as much as it's like, let me just say what I got to say. And then if just significant like feelings hurt because of that. And we just kind of recuperate and try to, uh, you know, mend the conversation after that fact, which I think is a pretty shitty way of dealing with people. I think you want to have a actual conversation before it comes to the conclusion that this person is listening to me or I'm not phrasing it loud enough or whatever. But when you have people on the internet that don't talk to people and just only bark, then that's how you come to that end. But I digress. Um, and I'm not, again, I'm not saying that pro crypto people are like better human beings or anything like that. I've seen a lot of pro, pro crypto people that are very, I think, odd individuals to say the very least, very weird people. Um, and a lot of them spend a lot of time on the internet too. Like they're not absolved of internet, <laughs> of being internet only individuals, but you know, I, I, I don't know. Um, I would just tell them to to try to bridge because I mean a lot of the a lot of the um, emotions that the anti crypto crowd are speaking about are real emotions, real problems because this is all happening in the arena of no walls, just the internet. Like everybody can talk to everybody. I think a lot of the anti's feel like they have the most power in the discussion they've ever had. Because when you have a conversation about oil, like I mentioned earlier, it takes a lot more to really have a, a, a stance of hurting the big oil companies. It takes a lot to hurt those companies. It, fucking cocksuckers. Uh, it takes a lot to, um, to hurt like... Um, you know, like when it comes like to big electricity, like we had the the Texas thing, right? Like the Texas power grid, and when it came to that, it took. 
I mean, I don't even know if it really hurt them. Like, I mean, all those people who died from not having power, I don't remember anything of substance coming to Greg Abbott or um, or the Texas Power Companies out of that. It just, people kind of had their, you know, they were mad about it, which they were right to be mad about it, and then it just seemed like time moved on. I don't remember anything of substance happening to any of the causes or actors in that whole um, very, very depressing saga. So it's like, for the first time, I guess, people have been who've had their voice silenced in the conversation of um, energy users, energy abusers that um, have kind of led to why I guess our, our uh, environment is how it is. They've never really had a voice at the table uh, until now. At least they don't they haven't feel like they've had one. I don't know if they have had I'm, I haven't been around throughout the entirety of the declining um environmental f function <laughs> i've been around since 1999 and i've probably followed what has gone into our uh planet functioning as poorly as it has as of late since probably about 2017 or so I, it's, not, it's not something i really focused on until i kind of saw what was happening when i you know stepped outside the front door and saw some of the changes of uh my local uh climate so I see where they're coming from. Like, that's that's the biggest thing. I see where they're coming from. And that's why I don't invalidate what they're saying. It's just being, you know, petulant kids just yelling that they're not getting their way on, on this topic. Where they're coming from is important. But I think it's aimed, one, far too low in the grand scheme of things. Like, if you really want to go up to crypto, you need to go a little bit higher. Uh, and then, two, I think it's still... I didn't mention this yet. But I think it's all, its own... Uh, Aimed, not owned, aimed at a market share of the problem that's still relatively small. In the grand scheme of things, crypto um, rigs, as compared to an Exxon, a BP, somebody of that magnitude that's really like been the problem for decades, if not centuries, those fucking people still are like 70 to 80% of uh, percent the problem. If you look at a uh, document, my homeboy actually looked at the one, but you look at a document that speaks to like how much is allocated in terms of the problem, like between your individual person or even like a big group of individual people, and then massive corporations, uh, especially when it comes to oil rigs. We don't even like, I think it was a part of that bill that kind of spoke to the fact that like everybody pretty much changed, everybody being like the little guy changed their uh, mechanism and became the shit like fossil fuels and, and gas and cars and such, it still would not matter in terms of slowing down the problems that have happened for years with the climate, um, global climate. So it's just, I said it to say that like, even if like, let, let me just ballpark and say there's like 10,000 crypto rigs in the world, which is a lot of electricity being used, like a lot of fucking electricity being used. And that's uh, probably a high ballpark. I, I feel like it's probably less than that, but I don't know. Let me just ballpark it. That's that. I would bet cash money those 10,000 crypto um, rigs, like let's call it Bitcoin farms. Because if it's something other than, if it's something other than Bitcoin Ethereum, let me just say it's a tidbit. If it's something other than Bitcoin Ethereum, more than likely, um, they're not intensive mining operations. Like, Corporations, operations, operations. Um, they're going to more than likely be like some small alt altcoin that's probably still intensive, but like in the grand scheme of like a problem, not really so much so. But Bitcoin, Ethereum, those are really the, like the problem ones. But um, I was just saying to say like, go big, right? Like, look at the pie chart. I think I think the time would be served better to just figure out a way to really attack, and I mean attack, an electricity, a fossil fuel using, um, fracking company, versus spending hours on the internet like shitting over some individual like crypto users. Like you're just you're not doing shit. I, I'm just gonna be honest with you. You're not doing shit in the day, and. Those four or five hours you do spend on, on spent on tweets. I'm not going to advocate for anything violent or anything that could really hurt millions of billions of dollars, but you can learn to do a lot of things on the internet, uh, security wise, 
and they'd be anti-security wise with the four or five hours. That's all I'm gonna say. And you spend those four or five hours every day. There's a lot of shit you can do. That's all I'm gonna say. I mean, hell, you could even figure out to be a lobbyist and then just say fuck these companies from the inside, like play their game and fuck them up from there. You don't necessarily do anything that is not becoming of internet legality. There's ways around it to hurt those companies. That's all I'm going to say again. You just got to figure out what that is. You know, it's out there. It's hard. Don't get me wrong. Cause I mean, these companies, as far as approaching by the legal rules, there's nobody who knows it better than a Fortune 500, Fortune 250, Fortune, Fortune 100 uh, lawyer or set of lawyers, legal team. They're going to know how to play this shit lobbying-wise better than any individual person. But I think there's so many people out there now that are anti-crypto, especially anti-crypto um, uh, emissions. I think if people band together, they really could hurt. If they want to hurt the industry, they probably could in a legal way. But more than anything, it could hurt the bigger, um, more time-tested uh, actors in these emissions. That's it for me. Um, I guess I, I was going to do a prediction. I feel like, I mean, at this point, a lot of the tech companies are just going pro-crypto. I mean, I don't know what else to say. If the money's going pro crypto, then that's where the conversation is going to go. Starbucks. If you have Facebook, if you have uh, Apple, Google, Twitter, the people who curate the conversation, if they are all telling you that they're going pro crypto, it's nothing you can do. At least there's nothing you can do by complaining and bitching about it on their platforms about it. And there's one thing I've seen. These companies do not give a shit about deplatforming you. And it's mainly because a lot of fucking people don't have platforms. They have accounts on other people's platforms. If you, let me say this. If the 45th president of the United States could be heavily censored, which I don't think he's been censored per se, but he can still say whatever he wants. And I would say about a third of the country could still hear or read what he says through some means. But let's just use the word censor just because it's light here censored by having his accounts banned on every social media platform, every just about every platform, period. Um, they want some fucking dude with like 5,000 followers on Twitter gonna fucking do. Like, if you want to make this happen, you have to make your own platform for one. It doesn't have to be a social media app, but it has to be something. You cannot use Twitter and tell Twitter, hey, don't have fucking NFTs. You don't have a fucking chance in the hell of stopping that shit. Now, if you do go outside of the, those realms and can test them otherwise, you have a chance. If you do say, I don't know, you get a petition going and you do get like 500,000 people to say, hey, I don't want NFTs allowed on Twitter. You have a chance. But as just saying, just tweeting at fucking Jack, who doesn't even run Twitter anymore, just saying, hey, Jack, stop being pro crypto. I don't think it's going to work. I, I just, I don't, I don't think they control a narrative. Like, at the end of the day, no matter what you say, they control their. They can pretty much these days that I mute anything they want to mute. Like, it's not that hard for them to do that. They can mute your account as well on top of that if you want to have another fucking discussion about that shit. They can fucking IP ban you off a platform. It's not that hard for them to get you off that fucking platform and get you to shut the hell up. You have to go outside of their realm if you want to change their realm. It's just the only way it can work. The same way, if you want to participate in society, you can't also complain about society. You got to go outside the realms of the way society works. You didn't see, I'm not going to quote any kind of like black power activists because they their name shouldn't be wasted such a trite conversation as fucking crypto, anti-crypto, whatever. But if you look at some of the better ones, the most um, impactful black activists, they didn't play by the rules of society to change society. None of them did. None. You just can't do that. That's not how it works. Um, that's just me giving my vote. I do hope that people who have this heart and fire for eliminated emissions do use it in a constructive way because I think that's what we all need. I, honestly, we all need to back that to some degree. Um, but I just think it needs to be better sighted. It needs to be more of a plan just instead of, you know, random bashing of your fellow man. I just don't think that works. That, that level of divisiveness is usually perpetrated by a higher power and a grand scheme of society. People need to admit, you have to realize how deeply that shit is rooted into you. But I, I could go on, but I'm not going to.
Hope you enjoyed this video. Hope I at least taught one thing to somebody, which I probably didn't, but at least try. That's all that counts.